Hello, welcome to the last of the language A star videos. Uh, we've covered everything else, and all that's left now is the media paper. So we start here with the actual criterion from the basis of the um, AQA mark scheme. So basically, this is what you're being tested on: your ability to read with insight and engagement, to make appropriate references to texts, and to develop and sustain interpretations of them. So basically, you have to be able to read and understand what's in front of you, pick out the right stuff to reference and actually talk about why it's been used. You have to be able to tell between fact and opinion. You have to follow an argument and identify implications. So basically what are the points they are saying leading towards and recognize inconsistencies. Where are there flaws in the argument or alternative sides in the argument? You have to be able to select material f um, to their purpose, select material, sorry, appropriate to their purpose, which basically means you have to pick out the right information for what you're trying to say. And you have to be able to collect or join materials from different sources and also make cross references. You also have to understand and evaluate how writers use linguistic, structural and presentational devices. So basically how they use certain things with words, certain things with layout and structure and certain kinds of images and non-verbal sorry non uh, written communication device uh, devices uh, such as um, color and uh, background images etc to achieve certain effects and be able to talk about comment sorry comment on the ways that language varies and changes in a the tone of a piece etc now that's the overall idea of what you're being assessed on so now we'll look specifically at the different sections now for the four different sections you're always going to get generally you get four questions with AQA and they're on different things now the video that we made earlier if you go and look at it it's on the media breakdown it will refer to something called PAL and generally the exam questions will be marked on something like that purpose audience language and layout so ultimately the questions will be asking you something that's based around those four sections so for this was the 2008 paper and we do actually have the answer for this um, this actual question in eight to a star response from AQA according to Michelle Hansen what could today's green consumers learn from Britain in the 40s and 50s so this is asking about the purpose Michelle Hansen wrote this article and she was trying to tell you that people could learn something in the 40s and 50s so what is the purpose now you'll see here that you've got the basic overall grade and mark descriptor which is from one all the way to seven this was a seven mark question and basically over here is basically an idea of what kind of response the student has provided is it something very simple with not much detail is there an attempt to start trying to answer it properly is there a clear attempt or is the writing detail shaped and absorbed so detailed has it got everything in it shaped means it's actually written very well and absorbed means it's actually considered all elements so basically the skills descriptors here are generally quite similar and obviously the content descriptors change year on year depending on what the article is so if we were looking for the a star we want a full understanding of the points for put forward so at any point you have to fully understand all the, the the things that the writer has actually put the material should be fully absorbed so if they basically put a story in for you to take a lesson from or a moral or a simile you should be able to understand that and actually explain why they've used it uh, references are integrated into the argument so you have to have some quotations not long ones uh, just really small ones and a detailed and conceptualized response so detailed basically means it's got a lot of information in it and conceptualized basically conceptualized sorry in this can in this um, in this idea means actually you can see exactly what they're trying to say so we'll cut across straight away to we'll break in and out of this one we'll look at each section so this is for this first section here where we're looking at the um, purpose being answered according to Michelle Hansen today's green consumers could learn how to really make Britain green from the actions of those in the 40s and 50s okay that's just something up good start she says in the 40s 50s people had to make do with what they had and that people of today could learn to make Britain greener by following the example of these recyclers from the past so there they've actually used the quotation just a really short one about who they're talking about and the fact that they're actually saying we should follow their example so she's made a point of what the article's talking about Hanson talks about how Britain in the 1940s and 50s quotation again would mend things that were broken mend things so that's another thing she learned rather than throwing them away so that's again another example of what she's saying over this time um, or that people could actually do with this uh, continuing then we're looking at the top half of this and she also says that people would reuse 
everything that they could rather than throw materials away that could be used again. She gives several examples of this, such as reusing kitchen foil and even re knitting jumpers. So she's actually picked out the examples that the writer in this case has given us. So that's why she's getting marks. So she's already definitely got three or four things already. Hansel also puts emphasis on how in the 40s and 50s food was never wasted. So again, it's not just saying that everything wasn't wasted, it's actually breaking it down individually. So she says that the tin foil wasn't wasted, food wasn't wasted, um, old jar clothes, etc weren't wasted because it was in short supply and was so valuable to the people so the idea there of the word valuable again so she's picking out that she's saying that things there were important and more important she says to make britain greener people should go back to reusing as they did in the 40s and 50s and not be wasteful as they are hansen strongly puts forward how everything in the lives of people in the 40s and 50s was centered around making the best out of things that they had so there's another point as well best of things that they had and that today's green consumers should apply a mentality to themselves so again another quotation so if we come across back to here we can see that she has put a full understanding of the argument she has referenced the argument all the way through she's um, fully absorbed she knows all the different elements that are coming through and it's very detailed response so she does actually mention ethical living to make do amend so these are the things that could be mentioned remember you only have to mention four or five of these to get the top mark um, uh, and then they just have to be there so not to waste resources good make do amend good reuse everything excellent not to waste food yes um, she didn't mention the lights didn't mention housework didn't mention cloth and nobbies recycle clothes and yeah so she mentioned four or five of them and that's all she needs to actually get that high mark there. So we move on to the second part from what the, uh, the from this one, etc. Um, what criticisms does Michelle Hansen make of other people's behavior and attitude? So again, this is in that part. Of what's the purpose again? So this is actually a strange one. This is again looking at the purpose again. So one B here again. The kind of writing that you actually want to do is, is again, just as detailed. So you'll see here, this is the same, this is the same, this is the same. The only difference is this section here, a full understanding of the criticisms, um, the facts and opinions, how they're used. So there's some element here of language in the fact that you're actually looking at the fact and opinion, although it's not clearly put the um, sometimes the exam will actually put that through to you. You have to look out for how they're putting the words in different ways. So here the criticisms, I mean, what they're actually looking for is some of the facts and opinions that are actually in there, although that's not obvious from the question. So that's partly for the purpose, what they're getting across, and also to focus on the language, which kind of words are being used, whether it's fact or opinion. So the, the only different thing from the last section was a full understanding of the criticism. So it's still just showing that you understand the whole thing and that you've actually absorb the whole thing so some of the criticisms that are there we'll see if she's actually picked up in this a star response that actually aqa have actually sent over to us so we scroll down Hansen expresses the view that in today's society people are far too wasteful on all goods, clothes, foods and materials. She's critical of this because so much waste means there is a bad effect on the world. The world's um, bursting landfill sites, quotation. Perhaps what causes her to be most critical of the actions of people today is that it need not be so. Although she acknowledges that not everything was recycled and reused in the 40s and 50s, um, although, sorry... She acknowledges that not everything was recycled and reused in the 40s and 50s can be so now. She does think, the grammar there is a little confused, she does think that far more could be done to create less waste. She is frustrated by the fact that people are not prepared to put effort into helping people reduce waste. Michelle Hansen believes that today's Michelle Hansen believes that today's population does not have the correct attitude towards waste and recycling things. She has the opinion that people cannot be bothered to help reuse and reduce waste. People nowadays do not need to ration food and materials and save them in the same way as they did in the 40s 50s. There were times of war and shortages when people had to be careful and reuse things they would not be able to buy anymore. Hansen thinks that people have a lazy attitude towards rubbish. Now when food and materials are plentiful, Hansen says that we should take better care of things and not throw away so hastily. So again, she's just summing up everything the writer said and putting it in her own words and actually explaining, uh, sorry, showing and demonstrating that she understands all the elements that the writer's trying to say. So it's not just, I mean, all of this you could sum up in one thing. You could just say she's telling people not to be wasteful, but she's actually given the contents and the references so that well, she shows the examination she fully understands what the writer has put. She thinks that we do not do this because we do not live in a time of crisis and we are too self-centered and do not care enough about the wider world for it to be of a concern. So here, um, some of the items that they're thinking uh, that today's generation is um, wasteful. Youngsters throwing food. She didn't mention. She didn't mention. She didn't mention. She didn't mention. Today, she didn't mention. She didn't mention expect generalized points there you go so basically even though she didn't pick out these ideas here the she's actually put a lot of generalized points in from the other one and again in aqa's own marking she got six out of six for this response 